The feeling of this home for me is one of joy. You come to this home and just to move through it is a pleasurable experience. My name is Sean Carter, Principal Architect of Carter Williamson Architects. I'm the Principal Designer of this project. This project's name is Warren Warwick. We're on the western flank of a place called Birchgrove. I'd like to acknowledge the Wan and Gaddy people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. The brief from the clients for this project was really not at the beginning, unlike many other briefs. Uh, it's a heritage house, had this 1990s addition to the rear. So the initial conversations were about how could we improve this house? Taking on a project like this and how do you bring a new building to an old building is really a great question that architects deal with a lot and one we obviously dealt with here. It had the accretion of this 1990s building that was sort of coalesced into the old form and we wanted to not only remove that because it didn't really respond well to the site nor to the existing building but to add to it in a way that allowed you to be referential, to look back and appreciate the old building, but also how they respond to each of their different contexts. The old building to the street, but the new building to the water. My name is Ben Peake, Design Director at Carter Williamson and Project Architect for Warren Worry. I'm Julie Nias, Senior Associate at Carter Williamson Architects and Interior Lead for our Warren Rory project. For me, and I probably speak for Sean and Ben also, this project was really the epitome of that perfect triad in collaboration between the client, architect and the builder. And that's one of the great things about having you know, architect and interior designers essentially working around the same table in the office is that we can come to site together and really design those uh, interior spaces together. So when you walk in through the front door, it's got that wonderful gesture of front door to the street. So you open that front door and you walk into the old building of Warren Worry. That's a beautiful building with sort of living spaces to one side and bedrooms to the other side. There's a space in between that threshold when you walk into the new and the bedrooms beyond, which is this wonderful gallery space, this double height void where you can stand around and you can look down to the dining room below. And that becomes a really significant part of the building. Then going down the house, so you wind down through these stairs. Off to the left-hand side, we've got these darker spaces that sit under the original house. Then you cascade down, I guess, into the main engine room of the house where we have that really significant dining space. That's where the table sits and it's held by the void above and that lovely big Tom Dixon light. And just beyond that, we have the kitchen, which is the real engine room of the house. Going down to the lower level, so back up to the stairs and winding all the way down, you have this room that we call the cabana, which is really the great lounge room of the house. And then off to the other side, we have the TV room, which is a, a long, elongated space. And again, both of those spaces open onto these terraces as the plan keeps on sliding down and out of the way. And then outside, particularly off the cabana area, we've got the pool. Once we get past the cleave, we have these cascading stairs and they go all the way down with this beautiful old sandstone sea wall. Going up the stairs that one final time, you come out onto this beautiful, generous roof terrace. It's about 60 square metres that sits within a garden, amplified by having the harbour beyond. When you're designing a house on the harbour in Sydney, uh, it comes with a big overhang of story and emotion. Sometimes the response has been just to throw just glass at it. Where here it was slightly a different response. We're very conscious of harnessing that view, um, but equally uh, where the view outside was enough, we allowed those windows to be solid. Sometimes there's a, a wall here and there deliberately holding and blocking a view so we could take you either side so we can control that view and what you see. Natural lighting is such an important part of every home. And here at Warren Worry, we've used it in a number of different ways. 
So primarily through the courtyards and the glazing, but also through a number of well-placed voids that connect the different levels to each other. We use many voids in Carter Williamson's language of architecture. For us, it's about generosity. The void gives you so much more than the space it takes away. So here we've used three different types of voids. We've got the void over the dining room. We have that lovely teardrop void, which is not quite as big. That's about a visual connection and a social connection to the cabana from the kitchen area. And then we have that lovely sort of interstitial void at the cleave to emphasise the depth of that cleave, but also to bring light down. The new addition to the original sandstone cottage was always going to be a critical aspect of the design. Uh, we understood that bringing the new building to the old was going to be really important in the understanding not only of the old building but of the new. Uh, and we had a sense that that needed to be sympathetic uh, in many ways. So externally, we're referencing the materiality of the original sandstone cottage and using a really beautiful blonde brick. The main structure of the home is concrete. And then obviously given the views and the aspect, there's a lot of glass that's being used as well. So they become, I guess, the foundation materials and composition of the exterior. So then when we come into the insides, we're responding then to how they've been used outside. And then with that, we added layers of texture and tactility to bring the monumentality of the architecture to a domestic scale for living. Another part of the client's brief was they wanted a sense of wow and discovery throughout the home. An example of that is in the kitchen where we've been able to use really rich materials using two stones, custom stained joinery, um, and introduce really expressive elements like the pendant light you can see behind me. So for the flooring, we chose timber as a nice warmth contrast to the expressed concrete ceilings. What you can't see under the timber is the hydronic underfloor heat. It works much the same way as the Opera House system does where we're exchanging hot and cold with the harbour through these wonderful sophisticated heat pump systems uh, in a plant room that possibly is the most beautiful plant room. Um, that's running all the hot and cold water for the house. It's also doing all the heating and cooling of the house. The home has really been designed around family life. But when you go down to the basement level, is an opportunity for us to treat it a little bit more like an art gallery. We have the exposed sandstone wall with that really bold Dion Horseman artwork. And the stair at Warren Worry is a real beautiful example of the collaboration between the client's ambition, uh, the architect's design, and the builder's craftsmanship in bringing all those things together. The favourite part of this home for me is standing on the grass and looking back at the house and seeing its resolution, that expressive nature, but truly capturing not only the, the client but also the site.